There are two armor sets in the Siege of Paris DLC, which for sure is less than the seven we got in the Wrath of the Druids. But to be fair, I prefer two brand new armor sets with powerful and interesting perks over more gear sets that add very little to the game. Especially the Paladin's armor is amazing, by the way. It might now be the best armor set in the game. And I will tell you why in this video, showcase them in action, tell you how to get them. Of course, if you like the Valhalla content here on the channel, then totally leave a like on the video. It would really help me out. And let's go. The Elite's credit pack giveaway for 2300 credits, of course, in the pinned comment. So click that to participate and be sure you are a subscriber of the channel before you participate. The winner will be announced the next week, so good luck. By now, you likely are aware that you can get the new Reaper armor to the Rebel system, right? You actually get the Bracers for free after reaching rank 3 of this infamy system and can then buy everything with the new Denye tokens you earn from these missions. The torso is 750 at level 4 and you can buy all the other pieces already before that. When you get the set for the first time on the silver rarity you have a face mask which I think looks awesome with the rest of the set. I in particular love the gloves that look different per hand. And you can upgrade these armor pieces to the mythical rarity but they don't really change a lot. Only the headgear will be completely different from a face mask to a pretty creepy mask that totally fits the reaper vibe. The sad part is though that these items do not show up in the transmog system yet. So if you like the face mask more then you cannot revert back to it. I'm sure they will fix that in the future, but for now it's good to know that you'll be stuck with the mask after the upgrade. The first perk of this armor set is already interesting, giving you 15% health back on an assassination without a cooldown. So really, the Thorn of Slumber ability is your best friend with this set, as it will be nice to sometimes put enemies to sleep and then kill them for some instant health back. Because of course, when you are a stealth player and are like sneaking through a camp with full health, getting health back is not really needed. You can of course also use Feign Death Rank 2 as an in-combat way to get health back by assassinating a target after falling on the ground. And while testing this, I thought of, wait, this actually also brilliant with the item's hard skill that was of course recently added, because while on the ground with the Feign Death ability, you get all your health back from this like bar that refills over time, without the enemies attacking you. It's a really powerful combo. But yes, because of this health regen skill that I still think is super overpowered, the Reaper perk totally lost some of its value, as getting health back is now easier than ever. But still, in the Siege of Paris DLC, as you maybe already noticed, there are like harder enemies, so having more ways to get health back won't hurt. And that's why I think it's actually amazing to buy the Reaper Major Armor Rune based on this perk in the Rebel system as well when you hit Infamy level 4. So then you can get health back while wearing other armor sets by putting this rune on the chest of that set. Like here you see me rock the Brigadine Armor and... I also use Thorn of Slumber, get health back by assassinating an enemy. It's totally more useful than many of the other major armor runes in the game. Going back to that Reaper set, because it also has a second perk, namely time slows down for longer when spotted by an enemy. For comparison, here we get alerted when wearing the new Paladin armor, which I will go way more in depth on in a moment. It got around the 2 seconds to react here before the combat begins, which of course is the same with other armor sets. While same spot with the Reaper armor gives you almost double the amount of time to get an advantage on the enemy. And in that extra time, you can of course perform an assassination before the combat begins, or use your bow, which might be even smarter. Like you got all the time to perform a charged shot with the hunter's bow or you can even hit the weak points of two enemies in that window. So it's basically a free focus of the Nornir in a way. It's a really nice perk, but to be fair, the Paladin armor is way, way better. This might be the best armor set in the game right now. It can be obtained through gear chest in Frankia. You find the helm, for example, over here on the map by looting the chest. The pens are even easier to get, it's in a tent over here on the map, but usually the chests are a bit better hidden, like the cloak as you find some keys first. 
it's over here on the map. You find the other two pieces in the second part of Paris, which you will go to for one of the main missions. But I think you can always like climb over the wall to get it earlier than that. These pieces are very close to each other. You also get this armor set on the silver rarity and upgrading does change more compared to the reaper set. It namely completely changes the bracers and the pants for example from silver to like gold plates and makes the other items more gold too. Although again you cannot revert back to the older versions because the transmog system doesn't seem to work with the new armor sets yet so keep that in mind i do love the look though this knight style armor really fits the perks on the set although i got another fun play style which i will share in a moment too and i say perks but you can ignore the first perk as five percent more stamina consumption and 50 more melee damage is not really noticeable. Here I do that special offhand combo with the scythe with the battle in armor. And it takes like 7 seconds to empty my stamina bar here. And now with another armor, same combo, it's still around the 7 seconds. And here I hit dummies without the battle in armor. So 60, 74 and 81 damage. But now same dummies and with the battle in armor. So with 50 extra melee damage you still see the same exact numbers. So now it's really all about the second perk you get for wearing the full set. Then you namely get 70% more adrenaline and actually lose 5% stamina consumption when using a shield. So fine when using a shield often, although again the 5% difference is not really impactful. The 70% more adrenaline charge from an attack is wild though. Because now you can have a full adrenaline bar in no time. So yeah, you get like bonuses for using a shield, but you don't want that. You want to like go full aggressive with this set. Four regular hits with one one-handed sword is one adrenaline bar. That's wild, right? But yeah, you can hit enemies even faster. Dual wielding two swords gives you with two hits from the light combo also one adrenaline bar so just two presses of the light attack button so i can just run in spam bench of thor do some regular hits in between get adrenaline back and you can just spam this ability deal a ton of damage kill the enemies in no time it's really satisfying but in larger groups a scythe is even better because swinging those weapons around will let you hit multiple enemies so that you get even more adrenaline back in no time so they can also spam the Venge of Thor, for example, which with this weapon is also really powerful. Yes, we tried it also in combination with that amazing flail, the Frost Rune that was at Red Eye once for even more adrenaline gains, but it's kind of an overkill at that point. I already got many build ideas, by the way, with the sets, and I cannot wait to go more in-depth on them soon. I already mentioned it before, though, but don't upgrade the Golden Flame ability to level 2. You can find one book near the key for the hidden mission and the other one is in a raid location over here on the map. So keep it on level 1 for the time being is my tip. Oh yeah and I said it looks like a warrior set but actually ranged is pretty good with this too. Because with a light bow you can hit enemies really fast and then also get adrenaline back real fast. So you can spam more of the ranged abilities. So totally subscribe if you haven't already for more build ideas, tips and tricks and way way more. A like on this video would of course really help me out. And totally check out my recent video on all the one handed swords in the Siege of Paris DLC including some tips with that amazing Swoyeus sword. You can watch it by clicking on the screen and for now I will speak to you next time. Goodbye!